Hi. Today we have a DMG style Game Boy Pocket on the desk. It's in the box. The box is in pretty good condition. I mean, not perfect, but uh, pretty good condition. Uh, there's the paperwork, serial numbers match, and all that. The Game Boy itself is in. Um, let me put that aside. The Game Boy itself is in fairly good condition. Uh, there are a few scratches, kind of deep scratches at the top here. And it certainly needs some cleaning, but um, let me pair it up and I'll show you what the big problem is. So let's put some batteries. And um, let me just, yeah. And the problem is missing horizontal lines. Yes, horizontal, not vertical. Vertical, so this this is where the problem is. Vertical lines are a common problem on original DMG, and they are easy to fix, but from my experience, Game Boy Pocket suffers from horizontal lines more often than vertical lines. And yes, they are not easy to fix, but I've done quite a few of these, and I'd say my success rate is about 70, maybe 80%, so I can, I can uh, fix seven, eight out of ten devices with uh, with this problem. I'll switch to microscope view now and uh, let's see what we can do with this one. I certainly hope we can save it as it's the only uh, DMG style Game Boy I have. Or more precisely, um, it's the only DMG style device with the LED um, here. Power status LED. I have two more, but uh, both of them don't have the the power LED. So uh, and and they are not not in the box. So again, I'd like to I'd like to fix this one. If um, if I fail, uh, I'll probably um, use the screen from one of the other um, two devices and just um, install it here, clean this one, and yeah. Okay, so let's switch let's switch to the microscope view and. Uh, Let's see what we can do with this one. Okay, so the device is disassembled. Um, I have uh, the motherboard. I have a screen connected. Uh, I'm powering up, powering it this uh, up from the external power supply. And uh, see the the screen. These uh, horizontal lines um, are essentially generated by, or, or the, the the signal is provided by this lines here, but uh, from what I can see, or from my experience, the most problems are actually coming from this connection here. So um, the ribbon cable that goes from, from the motherboard connects to this, um, that, that other ribbon cable that connects to the screen, and this is where the problem is, um, again, in my experience. Uh, let me let me just demonstrate that. So I'll power the thing up, and as you can see, hopefully there's reflections all over the place, but I can't do anything about it, unfortunately. So we have two or three missing lines here. It's probably three missing lines. So let me now. I'll just try to do it. I'll just push on the on the back at that at that place that I showed you that that connector you see it's changing i'm applying pressure and it's changing so for a split second we had like two missing lines now it's back to three two missing lines as you can see so what we need to do is we need to make sure that this connector or this um this place where these two are connected um it's okay. So the lines we were missing were at the top, so it's somewhere here. We need to make sure that these are okay. And how I do that is I um, apply heat by using um, soldering iron. Um, my temperature is set to 190, and it is 190. I mean, it's calibrated. Uh, 
this ribbon cable, let me show it again. This ribbon cable is um, very delicate. It melts like the, this, um, I don't know what the material is. This is um, like heat resistant, so we can apply quite a lot of heat and it'll be okay. This one is completely different story. Um, 190 is probably the max. It's probably even too much. Uh, it will melt some of this, but um, actually let me try and set it to 180. We'll see what happens. But I'm not pressing with the, uh, with the soldering iron. I'm just gently moving back and forth. And the tricky part is that while on DMG you can do it you know, and see what's happening on the screen. On this one, you obviously can't because it's on the other side. So the screen is here, and you see we have two missing lines now. Um, so what I do is I, let me just um, flip it this one, or maybe maybe this way around. It will be easier. And let me just flip it again where the problem is, at the top. So it's right, right here right here. So I'll be applying heat right in this area. Now let me zoom in a little bit because this is way too far. Okay, so I think this is good now. Uh, so the problem is somewhere here along these um, connections. So what I'll do again, uh, soldering iron at 180, uh, that's Celsius, I mean, clean. And what I'll do, I'll just press Press here. With a, this is a, just a spider. It can be anything really. So I'll press here. Just focus. And I'll gently go over it. So I'm I'm barely touching it. Just like this. No pressure at all. Just go over it back and forth. Some leftover solder. Okay, so I've never I've never done it on uh, 180 degrees. Always done that on 190. But 190 tends to uh, at some point melt this top layer. Um, so let's let's try with one eighty. Okay, that should be okay. I'll keep it for a second. Keep the pressure for a few seconds. Okay. Now let's flip it back and see if we have any improvement. So we have three missing lines again. Let's do it again. Again, it might be that 180 is not enough. Okay, I'll change the temperature to 190 and we'll see. That will help. So 190. And again, put some pressure on the ribbon cable. And let's try and do it. Okay. 
I'll keep the pressure for a few seconds. Okay, and let's test it again. Now it, it's out of focus, but uh, I don't need focus right now on this. Uh, and no, still nothing, no change at all. Um, okay, that's bad news, but we have nothing to lose. Let's change the temperature and set it at 200 degrees Celsius and see what happens. I think it will melt the um, this top layer here, but even if it does, and what counts is the um, connection on this on these uh, lines here. So yeah, we have nothing to lose. 200 degrees Celsius. Pressure on the on the ribbon cable. Just make sure you're putting pressure where the two kind of are connected. So not here, somewhere here, so that both are um, being pressed. Okay, 200 degrees, and let's see what happens. Again, this will probably melt slightly this top layer, but helps. Oh, great. Not melting. Yeah, on most of the devices I work with, or I've worked with so far, 200 degrees would melt this top layer. This one kind of stretches it a little bit, but certainly not melting it. I'll go slightly up, so a few more lines maybe, maybe some here. Oops. Yeah, that should definitely be in the range of those missing lines. And again, patience is the key. Don't rush. Don't put 250 and uh, hope it works. Okay. So again, 200 degrees this time. Let's see what happened. And yeah, somewhere here. Power. And I think we did it. See this? It's done. Let me just zoom out here. That's the edge of the that's the edge of the screen. And power on. There we go. So this one is fixed. Um so this time it's 200 degrees. So again, um Obviously, be very careful with it. Don't put too much pressure on this side either. But again, from my experience, this side tends to be fine. I've actually never, ever seen a device that has this one, that had this side, um, that has problem that had problem on this side. It was always this connector here. And where is it? This one. So yeah just to, just to, you know to summarize start with 180 maybe 190 make sure it's actually 190 so make sure your soldering iron is uh, 
um, calibrated and be very gentle don't push because you will melt this and once you melt this top layer um, this um, these lines have no support at all and they will go all over the place and they will break and that will be the end be very careful I mean just the yeah, so as you can see, there's uh, yeah, there is some difference. Like these are more shiny, this side, which wasn't done. This is kind of less shiny, but still okay. Nothing melted. So start with 180, 190. Uh, try a few times. Go like this way. So along the lines. Put some pressure around, uh, around this area here. And uh, be patient. This doesn't work. Try again with slightly higher temperature, maybe 195, 200. 210 will most likely melt the whole thing. But again, if you're careful, if you're very careful, careful, and you only melt this side where the solder is, it should be fine. If you melt this part, then it's game over. So yeah, it's done. I'll reassemble the device and I'll, I'll, I'll show you the, the end result. So the Game Boy is uh, reassembled, more or less. I mean, it's settled on. There's no screws. There's just one screw on the motherboard. Let me show you that. So it's uh, held by one, one um, screw there. Uh, screen is connected. And again, the reason I do this is I will be cleaning this, and there's dust um, because I obviously uh, didn't um, blow out the dust. So I'll I'll do that later. So let me just put this back. Okay, and uh, can you see the screen? See this? Absolutely no horizontal lines. And let me just bump jack. Maybe one of my favorite games from uh, eight bit. Sinclair ZX Spectrum times. So it's just the contrast. So as you can see, works perfectly fine. And I'm dead already. Um, yeah. Everything works perfectly fine. As you can see, it's not that hard. I mean, you need um good soldering iron. You need it to be calibrated, you need to know exactly what temperature you're working with. Um, but yeah, if you have good soldering iron, it's doable. As I said, 70, maybe 80% of these devices with, with horizontal lines can be fixed. So I'm very happy this one worked. So it's cleaning time now, and I'll reassemble that and uh, enjoy this Game Boy. Okay, that's that's all for today, I guess. Um, the next video will be coming up soon, and it will be Game Boy as well. It's probably it will be um, DMG, original DMG Game Boy. Um, so yeah, watch this space and um, please subscribe if you enjoy these videos. Thank you.